Well, we're underneath our 1969 Roadrunner hood. Uh, this particular car is a real RM Roadrunner, so it did start life as a real Roadrunner. At this point, it does not have a 383 in it. It has a 440 that had some work done to it. It does have an Edelbrock six-pack intake manifold that would have been off of like a 69 uh, A12 car. The three correct carburetors also go with it. Stock cast iron exhaust manifolds that would have come on this car from the factory. Does have the correct six pack air cleaner on it. Press the light distributor. A pair of uh, finned aluminum Mopar performance valve pan covers. Has the original beep beep horn in it that does blow. Um, power steering in this particular car does not have uh, disc brakes or power brakes on it, but it does have power steering. Very important. 24 inch standard radiator in it. Fender tag is still intact, brand new battery, very clean engine compartment. It does have the heater hoses still hooked up to it. Uh, the front, uh, uh, the area in the front is real nice and undisrupted. Uh, it's just a nice, clean, clean engine compartment. These motors, the six-pack engines, made 390 advertised horsepower, which was really underrated, very much underrated. Uh, they were more into the middle four somewhere for horsepower. Nice running car, it has a great sound to it, has a nice set of uh, Flowmaster mufflers which you'll see in our undercarriage video on it, and a super nice clean engine compartment. Let's walk around this guy, see what it looks like. Okay, your hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida, and on the floor today we have our 1969 Sassy Grass Green, hard to tell, huh, uh, Roadrunner. It's a 446 pack car in the configuration that it is now. Started life as a 383 car. Nice running car, nice fit and finish vehicle. Great color combination, black, uh, flat black stripes on the hood. Nice green color. Um, grill is absolutely like new. It's not marked up or chipped up or anything. All the uh, um, trim inside the uh, uh, anodized aluminum area is just as fresh and nice as could be. The headlight basils, the same way, the argent paint on them is nice and fresh looking and as it was when it was new. Filler panel, very, very nice. Chrome on the front bumper, the same way, very nice. Nice fitment of the front bumper too. It's not uh, angled in any way or, or shifted to left to right in any way. It's very, very nice. Hood pins on the front to hold the hood down. Nice front end of the car. Got a nice represented uh, uh, front end to it. Plymouth uh, name on the front of it. I don't see anything at all amiss on the front of this vehicle. Let's see what's on the side. One thing about this vehicle, you park it out in the parking lot, and if you can't find this one in a row of cars, there's something wrong. This is as bright a vehicle as you'd ever want to find. Paint on this vehicle is really nice, really nice. Um, side marker light fitment, very nice. No wheel lip moldings on this guy. And the uh, front fenders aren't pulled or anything from tires hitting them. Although you can see the wheels on this vehicle are considerably wider than the standard 6 inch wheel that would have come on it. They appear to be 8 inch uh, um, steel wheels with the correct style uh, dog dish hubcaps on them. Gives it a nice look for that era. Correct uh, wiper arms, uh, more of a modern design uh, blade on it. Tinted windshield in the front, no marks at all on the windshield, none. The ash is nice and clean in it also. It doesn't have any fade to it, and the pad looks like it has no marks or anything on it. But we'll address that a little bit uh, in a few minutes here once we do the interior uh, video of it. Oh, it's missing the uh, our little Roadrunner guy on the side here. We're going to have to get him and put him back on there. Fender to door to rocker panel fitment. Very, very nice on the car. Standard non-adjustable uh, mirror. Uh, driver's side, chrome on the uh, vent windows, very, very nice. Trim around the front window, no marks or dings or hammer marks on it at all. Paint on the top of this car is just glass smooth. It looks like it's wet. That's how nice the paint is on the side of this, uh, or on the top of this car. Down the side of our door, really, really nice. Chrome handles are brand spanking new. Locks the same way. Needs new window wipes, and I know that we have them. We did order them. They 
just came in today. We're doing a video shoot without them. You can't see them in the video, but these window wipes, fuzzies, whatever you want to call them, will be brand new whenever we ship the car. We did get them. They just came in a few minutes ago. Door to the rocker panel, just beautiful. You can see how nicely that fits. Very, very nice. Trim around our swing out back window the same way. Drift rail. Uh, really nice. Oh. That has to be snapped on a little differently than it is. There's a little bit of an overhang there that has to be addressed. Quarter panel, very nice. And again, the same thing with this quarter panel. A nice tin in it. You can feel the edges. Tinted back window also. Trim around the, uh, the back light. Very, very nice. You can't even put your fingernail in between the, uh, the stainless trim around the window and the body of the car. Very nice fitment there. Hat shelf, rack, uh, appears to be original, doesn't need replaced, very, very nice condition. It's still black, a little tiny bit of fade, but nothing to get excited about. You, you wouldn't change it, you'd leave it alone. Rest of the quarter panel, same as the rest of the side of this car, very, very nice. Haven't found a stone chip or a mark on this paint yet. It's real nice down the sides of it, nice curve to the... Uh, uh, rear quarters on these cars the way they came. Bumper fitment in the back, same as it is in the front. Very, very, very nice. Driver's side of the car, other than missing our little guy on the, uh, our little road runner there, uh, and need new wipes. I can't find out uh, anything on this that's uh, uh, not exactly the way it should be. And the wipes will be replaced, and we'll get another bird for it, too. Okay, around the back of our bird, uh, you can see the gaps just like in the uh, front of the vehicle on the hood, which I neglected to mention the gaps, but they're just absolutely gorgeous. Same as they are on this uh, rear deck lid. You can see they're just really nice. Paint again on this car is very, very, very nice. Nice green color to it. I don't see any blending or fading or anything on it. Hey, we got our bird where he belongs there. Um, tail light assemblies. This argent area is just as nice and fresh as can be. Both sides and the lenses themselves are also very nice, shiny and clean yet. Uh, bumper fitment, same as the front, absolutely gorgeous. There's, there's no deviation whatsoever, uh, fore and aft, sideways, anything. It's just as nice as could possibly be. Backup lights, the lenses are very nice and clean and clear. Correct style exhaust tips for a 69 uh, Roadrunner. Back end of this car is just absolutely gorgeous just like the front end of it. Let's see what's on the passenger side. Okay, going off our passenger side, side marker light, just like the other two, as sweet as could possibly be. Quarter panel fitment, trim around. Back window, I can't believe the trim on these windows, are just absolutely flawless. It couldn't possibly be any better. Uh, quarter panel, same as the other one. It's got some big rubber in the back, but uh, it hasn't disrupted the uh, fender lips at all. It hasn't hit, hit at any time. Again, the roof, just no issues whatsoever. Uh, drip rail molding, same as the other side. Really, really nice fit. Again, a little bit of an overhang here. I don't understand that. We'll have to figure out why that's, why my finger's catching there. Back flip out window, nice as could be. Still haven't found any dents or marks or dings yet, though. We're still hunting. Look at that door fit. Beautiful. Door handle, same way. Chrome is brand spanking new on it. We got our bird on this side. Missing on that side, but we're going to get one for it. Again, door to rocker panel to front fender. Just absolutely beautiful. The wing. Of course, the fuzzies definitely get replaced. We have them. Just have to put them on. Trim around the front window, same as the other side, no marks. Antenna's fine, there's no marks on it. No bends or anything. It's a looks like a different style of mask than Mopars usually have. They usually have a single mask on it, but it looks like a Mopar base. It's a little confusing to me, but it does have an antenna. Front fender, lip again, undisrupted. Front marker light. Really nice, nice fitment of the hood. You can see the gap, uh, the cowl area. 
Everything is really, really nice on this car. It's a great color combination, 69 Roadrunner. It does have 446 pack in it. it does have a set of color keyed, bigger, they appear to be eight inch at least, um, wheels on this car with the dog dish hubcaps. Gives it a lot of like retro style and, and it's, a, it's a set of wheels and tires that they have BF Goodrich uh, uh, rubber on them, a huge set on the back. Uh, it's something that if you wanted to add a set of Kragers or a set of torque thrusters or whatever you decided, you know, you always could. But these wheels do fit the car uh, dress-wise, and they could have come that way in 1969. Really a great-looking car. I went over this entire vehicle. There are no stone chips, no marks, no dings. It's very straight. Panels all fit as they should. Uh, no leaks in the engine. It's a 440 69 Roadrunner in a fantastic color, very hot color at this point in time. In fact, they even brought Dodge and Chevy and Ford all brought this back, the same bright uh, green color the last few years. So you've got a nice, uh, nice bodied 69 Roadrunner, solid as a rock, and it's available at Hanksters in Daytona Beach, Florida. Check it out on our website. Okay, we're in our 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner, sassy grass green. Bright green as you could possibly think. Uh, no marks or cracks on the steering wheel. There's an unusual thing. Usually these things have a lot of shrinkage through age. This one has none. Headliner just as nice and tight as a drum the whole way. And of course we, the hat rack was good. The shelf in the back, that was just as sweet as could possibly be. Uh, sun visors, really, really nice. No uh, <coughs> faded area in the uh, rear view mirror. All the trim on the inside of this car is very nice. Door panels are just as they were when they were new. Uh, the uh, chrome on the uh, handles and, and door latches, again, just as nice as you'd ever expect. A trio of aftermarket gauges underneath. Uh, the dashboard in this vehicle is out of a 1970. It's either got to be out of a uh, 69, uh, 6869 uh, Charger or out of a 70 Roadrunner. Uh, it appears to be out of a 70 Roadrunner, actually. Um, different type of gauge configuration. It does have the original wheel style radio in it, which are really worth some money at this point. They're, they're starting to get pretty valuable. Column shift, deluxe interior in it. Carpeting is all very nice in the car. It's not faded anywhere. The interior, I'm sure, has been redone. Front and back seat both match. Nicely padded, uh, nice... Uh, uh, finish on the vinyl just the way it was in 1969 when it would have left the factory. All the padding, the dashboard, all your soft padding around your uh, glove compartment box, uh, around your radio, around underneath the gauges, that's all just as nice and sweet as could possibly be. Has seat belts front and rear, which is an unusual occurrence in many of these cars. A lot of guys either took them out or just neglected to put them back in during restoration. This particular car does have them. The interior represents itself to be as new in 1969. There's not one thing in here that you can say is disrupted. From the headliner clean to the uh, carpeting on the floor, it's just as sweet as could possibly be. Nice interior in a 69 Roadrunner. Absolutely nothing to say negative here.
Hi, we're underneath our 1969 Real RM Roadrunner. It is a Roadrunner that started life as a Roadrunner, not a satellite. This particular guy has a 446 pack uh, on it. It's a uh, 69 date code engine on it from what I can see. It has a high torque starter. Has uh, drum brakes in the front, 11 by threes, 11 by two and a half in the back. I'm sure. Heavy duty sway bar, uh, new shocks in the front. High rod ends are like new. Heavy duty torsion bars. Front uh, pan is not on the uh, uh, bell housing part of the uh, transmission. It's left off to help dissipate some of that heat uh, from the uh, torque converter. Try to keep that oil a little cooler does have the original uh, steel lines that go forward for the uh, cooling up front also for the uh, uh, transmission fluid. It has a deep B&M pan in it with the drain plug that allows you to go ahead and change the uh, transmission fluid without uh, having to go ahead and uh, drop the pan off of it. You can see it is the original Mopar pan, but there are no leaks whatsoever on the engine on the 440 motor that's in this. Also no leaks in the bell housing area or transmission. The um, Stock exhaust, uh, cast iron exhaust uh, manifolds are on this particular vehicle and it appears to have, uh, let's say, two and an eighth inch uh, primary pipes coming off of them heading toward the rear, but we'll get to that in a second. The uh, front subframes on the car, there is one little pull mark here from being tied down at some point in the, being transported, but no real jack marks on the sides. A couple little dimples from maybe a jack at one point in time. And again, another little tiny pull here, but really nice solid subframes. No one's jacked them up on the uh, the uh, drop-down aprons in the uh, front wheel uh, housings also. Uh, the uh, uh, horizontal uh, structure that ties the uh, two subframes in uh, together is really, really nice. There's no marks whatsoever on them. New transmission mount, you can see there's no uh, leaks on the uh, tail shaft of the transmission also. Floor pans in this vehicle are... This particular one has been replaced in the front. This one is still original. The main part of the uh, uh, floor pans is uh, original on this vehicle. I don't see where they've been replaced. They are the original ones from the factory. Pinch weld still intact. The structural uh, uh, supports on the um, floor pans themselves from the uh, uh, drop down area is uh, is real nice. No one's jacked them up on anything uh, from the rocker panel drop downs on it. Um, new U joint in the front. Drive shaft is nice and clean on it. Uh, halfway back through the vehicle, I don't see anything on the floor pans. Uh, it, it's nice and clean. A little bit of splatter undercoating here from Mopar through the years. This one doesn't have it real thick. Uh, apparently this one wasn't designated to have uh, a, a sound deadener installed on it, but it, uh, it's a nice, really nice clean undercarriage so far. We're about halfway back through the car. Um, there's absolutely nothing detrimental on this vehicle so far. And again, this sounds very repetitive to, to say this, but we go over these cars prior to putting them up on uh, the rack to show you, you know, the, the good integrity of the undercarriage of these vehicles. So we know they're pretty good to begin with. If they don't make the cut, they're out of here. We don't keep them. This one is like the rest of the vehicles that we try to sell here at Hangsters, as good as can be. Let's see what's on the second half. Okay, functional parking brake intact. Original brake line from front to back. That hasn't been uh, replaced, doesn't need to be, it's just as it was when it was new. The uh, fuel line is the original fuel line going toward the back also. A uh, set of um, Flowmaster style mufflers. Um, again, two and eighth inch pipes going out of them. Uh, new U-joint in the rear. Multi-leaf rear suspension. Fin drum brakes in the rear relatively new shocks that are air shocks in the rear also. Eight and three quarter heavy duty rear end in this. Uh, again, it doesn't have any leaks that, uh, that are apparent on it. Uh, all the lines going into the uh, 
and a gas tank are they, they look real good. There's a set of there's a piece of flex line that went from the original steel line into the tank itself. Just uh, uh, the original piece uh, just probably deteriorated with age and it's been replaced by a uh, uh, braided flex line. Multi leaf rear springs, nice arch to them. Torque boxes in the front. Don't have any marks on them from being jacked up through the years. Another pull here and another pull here from someone being a little overzealous whenever they transported this with the hooks uh, at some point of its life. But again, nothing to uh, detract from the uh, uh, structural support of this uh, vehicle at all. Subframes in the back are just like the front, just as solid and nice, nice as could possibly be. Um, going up over the uh, rear differential and toward the back of the vehicle straight as an arrow a very nice condition the original floor pans from what I can see also in the trunk I don't see where they've been replaced or need to be the drop downs and the quarters are really really nice absolutely nice they still even have little tabs on them gas tank it's been painted I can't tell you if it's a replacement or if it is the original gas tank the bands are just flawless it's almost too nice to be the original one. It's probably been replaced at some point of its life. Painted black to uh, match the rest of the uh, vehicle underneath. Bar across the back that uh, ties in your tube subframes. Uh, no pull marks or anything on it. No deterioration. There's absolutely no, uh, no rust or deterioration or perforation whatsoever on this vehicle. Anywhere underneath. Absolutely nowhere. And you can see no leaks on any of the uh, uh, components underneath the uh, vehicle. Um, Parking brake still intact. Uh, floor pans as sweet and nice as could possibly be. It's just another car that we have here at Hangsters that's way above average and as it was when it left the factory. Really nice looking vehicle.